In this video, I'm going to build the most profitable trade strategy I can only using the RSI indicator. Oh, and I only have an hour to do so. The rules are simple. One hour, the strategy has to be profitable, meaning it has to consistently make money over time, and I can only use the RSI indicator. That means I'm not allowed to pull any other indicators into my code, but I can use information I can pull from the price and volume chart. So open high, close, and low, and any volume, average volume, that kind of stuff, I'm also allowed to pull into the code. All right, so while going over the rules, I went ahead and got my strategy template set up, wasting no time of our one hour here. So I'm gonna have an area here where I define my entrance. I've called it buy because in today's strategy, I'm only going to be longing. Then I have defined a couple of blocks for why I'm going to exit both with a profit lock and very importantly, with a stop loss. Then of course I have my actual function to take the order for the entrance and my actual add order functions for both my profit and my stop. So keep that in mind throughout the video. These are the blocks that you will notice changing as I update code. So my initial idea with this strategy is to buy a strong RSI and to lock profit when that RSI comes down. I'm a continuation trader. So you've always heard buy low, sell high. Everyone's heard that trope, right? I'm more of a buy high, sell higher trader. It's just what works for me. So I'm going to use what I know works for myself as the basis of this strategy, right? So I want to buy something like the RSI over 50 and I want to lock profit something like when the RSI comes back under 40. So buy a strong stock, let it run for as long as it can run, let it continue, let it keep going, get stopped out, hopefully locking profit on a dip. Now, as far as the stop loss goes, I'm actually not 100% sure yet. Give me a few minutes to do some work here and I'll get back with you. Let me update you guys with where I am at this point in the process. So I have added a couple of things. First off, I forgot that I, I usually add an input into my strategies with a position size equal to 10,000 so that in my add order function, I have my trade size set to obviously 10,000 divided by close. This means that the trade will always take a $10,000 position or at least as close to with the full value, full share value uh, divided by the closing price of the stock, right? It won't take partial shares or anything like that. But so that's the first thing I added. Next, I'm doing a bit of jumping around with what the right RSI number to be using is. You may notice also, I have my own back testing study that I have personally created. You see that running up in the top left of the chart. I'm trying to find a balance between taking more trades to make more money or taking less trades to make less money. Vis-a-vis, -vis, if I put this on 50 and 40, you'll notice the PL goes from $8,800 up, but a 2,900 max drawdown to $11,800 up, but a $6,600 drawdown. So more percentage heavy of a max drawdown, which isn't necessarily a good thing. That's the fun and the usefulness of this uh, backtesting study. It's not always about just what makes the most profit, right? Anybody can create a study that just makes a ton of money. That's actually really easy to do on a static subset of data like we're using here. That's very easy to do. It's important to optimize for a, you know, a lower max drawdown percentage, a higher win percentage, a smaller number of trades, a higher average win, a lower average loss. It's important to optimize for those things much more than just the gross total PL. So that's sort of what I'm jumping between right now, trying to find the right balance. I've also set the buy to only be true if the yesterday's close is over the average closing price 
of the last five bars. And I also turned off my stop loss order for right now. I used a hashtag to comment out this add order line, which just means it's not doing anything because I kind of figure the RSI less than 50 both works to lock in profit. And of course, if the stock goes down after you enter, the, the, the profit will also, or sorry, the RSI will also go under 50 and will also stop you out. So let me continue working. Let me continue tweaking a few things. That's where we currently are. We're making progress. I mean, I'm on the NVIDIA or actually, no, I'm on the spy chart. I thought I was still on NVIDIA. So wow. Yeah, of course it makes a ton of money on NVIDIA, but that's, I actually in my head thought I was running that on the NVIDIA chart the whole time. This is on spy. So actually pretty nice returns. You know, if you look around at a couple of different stocks block, I love the test on this one just because it's got a little bit of everything with the up and down move. Um, Walmart, um, profitable waste management, profitable McDonald's, profitable. So it actually seems to be a decent little baseline for a strategy. We got some time left though. Let's try to make it even better. So in that block of time, you'll notice that we simplified our buy a little bit. I actually got rid of the uh, close is greater than the average close of the last five. That wasn't really seeming to do a whole lot, just messing up the code. And it really wasn't changing the statistics much, if at all. So I got rid of that. And you'll also notice now we've got a high mark profit. So now if the RSI gets up over 80, we're locking profit. And now we are making use of that stop loss. You can see I uncommented the stop loss order down here. If the RSI breaks below 30, we're getting stopped out. So this is now very simplified. It's all literally just RSI values for the buy, profit, and stop, which is kind of the point of this video, just using that as much as possible, right? And you'll notice now on SPY, up 18 Point six thousand dollars, a forty-two hundred dollar drawdown, um, up over a hundred and twenty-five grand on Nvidia. Of course, you can't use a chart like Nvidia and pull any kind of real back testing numbers out of because you could type anything out of your butt and you're going to make a ton of money on this ticker. But um, I do still like to compare the PL to the max drawdown, ten thousand dollar max drawdown. What else did we look at last time? Waste management we looked at last time. Now twenty-two seven up. Max drawdown, 6,400. McDonald's now up 43,000. Max drawdown under 8,200. So it's looking really nice. I can see that there are still some things I need to clean up in the code. Like when the RSI is over 80, it's trying to both buy and sell at the same time. I can clean that up pretty easily. So let me do that. Let me try to make some few final optimizations, but this is looking good. <laughs> Alrighty, that's going to do it. Stop the time. I think we just made it under an hour. That's going to be our final code. Let's go over the results. But I want you to notice first, look at the back test data now on SPY. Remember after our first block of work we did, SPY took something like 188 trades to make like less than 12 grand with a $6,000 drawdown or something like that. It's now only taken 77 trades to make over 17 grand and have a drawdown of only 2,500. That's a really nice drawdown percentage, meaning you know your max drawdown versus how much you made in a percentage. Really, really nice. That goes and show you even inside of an hour the power of what code optimization and using code to back test can do for you. I can run all these tests that quickly because I'm utilizing code to do it, right? Automation speeds up everything. It's really, really nice. But the first thing we did, I um, set an and condition. RSI is less than 80. All that's doing is simply making it so if the profit take is true, it won't buy. That's just cleaning up that crappy, choppy block of orders. That's not actually taking any trades, right? So that's just a little bit of cleanup. Then 
let me know if this is cheating. In the code, in that little quick code block, I don't know if you'll notice because of how fast it was moving, but I did type in and simple moving average is over 200 or the close is over this 200 simple moving average. Then I remembered I'm not allowed to use simple moving average. That's another indicator. But I said I was allowed to use price action, any information provided to me by the chart. So I took the average closing price of the last 200 bars, which of course is the same thing as the simple moving average, but I did the calculation myself using the price chart. I didn't use the indicator. You have to let me know if that's cheating, but when I added that, it helps the code a lot. I, I, I spoke about being a continuation trader, right? Now the strategy will only enter not only if the RSI is just over 60, but also if the, at the close is over the average closing price of the last 200 bars. So if the stock is actually in uptrend. That helps limit the number of trades. That helps lower the max drawdown really, really nicely. Our profit, still RSI over 80. Stop, still RSI under 30. I don't believe I touched those since the last week. But let's go ahead and flip through some of the same stocks. NVIDIA, of course, $111,000 up, $6,500 max drawdown. McDonald's, $35,000 up, $6,600 max drawdown. Waste Management, $21,000 up, $4,000 max drawdown. Block, $32,000 up, sub $4,000 max drawdown. Um, I believe that's all the stocks we looked at. But you'll notice really, really nice. A really nice, solid foundation strategy. And this is limiting myself to only an hour, to only using RSI. You can take this, you can build from it. But the point of this video, and if I make this a series of videos, is that you get to learn the pros and cons of the RSI. You get to use specifically how to use the RSI indicator in some of your own trade strategies, right? Now, I'm not going to be able to build the best strategy in the world only using one indicator in an hour, right? But in an hour, I just showcase to you some good ideas for how you can take this and make use of it in your own strategies, right? I actually like this code enough that I am going to put it up on my website daytradingstrategies.net where you can not only access this strategy, but all my other strategies, scanners, custom indicators, etc. I'm probably going to make a new section under strategies, something like one indicator or single indicator, I'll call it, so that you all can find how I am utilizing indicators inside of strategies to hopefully plug into your own. But once again, access all of my custom codes if you're interested in this stuff. You obviously are. You just watched this whole video. Daytradingstrategies.net. Link at the top of the description down below. Go check it out. Hey, not in just like the typical YouTuber sense, hit the like button. If you guys actually liked this video, please like actually like it. I want to get a sense of should I make this a series? I mean, there are thousands of indicators out there that we can make endless content in this sort of way. So if you guys did like this video idea, once again, go ahead and hit the like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video, but I will link you all to another video I think you'll enjoy on the outro screen. Trading stocks. He talks about trading stocks. It's important for you Americans and other international individuals to learn about stocks. 